Please welcome to the stage, Dawn Moses. There is something about me. I love the piano. Really love, love, love the piano. And I couldn't be more excited than be standing here today on stage with this drop dead gorgeous piano. And I have a lot of great piano stories. Students, lessons, teachers, books, old music. But the story that I want to tell you today isn't about a piano as much as, as, as it is about door openers. When I was a new mom, I decided that I wanted to take my new baby daughter to church, a little church out in the country in a field. And I discovered something very interesting about that church right away. They did not have a piano player. And every week, they would announce that they were looking for, hoping to find, and even praying for a piano player. And there I was, sitting in the pew, bouncing my baby daughter on my lap, thinking, now that would really be something, to be a piano player at a church. But I knew I wasn't near good enough, or talented enough, or educated enough for such a thing. Well, many weeks went by, and it, I began to realize that there really weren't any piano players to be had for this little church. So I gathered up my courage, pulled the person aside who seemed to be in charge, and confessed that I could play the piano a little, not very much, and I didn't know all the songs in their big song book. I could probably only play with my right hand to start, but if they were willing, I would do my very best until someone with more ability came along. And do you know what that church said? Well, they said yes, because they didn't know or believe or care that I wasn't talented enough or good enough or educated enough. And there I was with a little baby and a really big songbook. But what I didn't have at home at that time was a piano. So I would go to the church once a week to practice the songs for the next week's service. Mostly what I would do is pick out the melodies. congregation sang. I think much about that congregation, because here is the honest truth. I really fumbled through those first couple of years, and yet to a person, they never criticized me, never made me feel bad about my mistakes, of which there were many, hundreds, probably thousands. They were patient when I would jump up in the middle of a song because I could hear my baby fussing in the back. They were patient when I played with a baby on my lap. Somehow I had managed to land in an entire congregation of encouragers. Eventually, I began to learn a little left hand. My self-confidence grew. I became slightly less terrified every week. And I learned. I learned some really great truths such as that opportunity often comes simply because there is a need, and that you don't have to be a professional all at once, or even at all, to find a way to do what you love to do. Mostly, I realized that I wanted to be to other people the way that congregation had been to me. I wanted to be that person, that person that could see past another person's inexperience, see past their obstacles, see past their rough edges, I wanted to be that person who could see the abilities and the talents and the gifts that were theirs. I wanted to be a door opener to those around me. And I would encourage everyone here to be a door opener to those around you. For example, do you know that I did not watch my first TED Talk online? One of my favorite librarians at my local library, Deb, one day she handed me three DVDs and she said, I had to watch them. And when Deb told you you had to watch something, you had better watch it. So I did, and I was hooked. My friend Deb knows that there is a high percentage of households in our rural community who simply do not have access. 
They don't have a computer. They don't have access to the internet. They may not have reliable transportation. She believes in the power of TED Talks. She appealed to the organization relentlessly until they began to make TED Talks available on DVD for just such a situation. I now watch TED Talks online. My friend Deb is a door opener. She's that person to those around her. I don't exactly know when it began to happen, but at some point, I began to realize that you could play notes during your song that were not exactly written on the page. Little extra eighth note here, or little extra chord there. I'm just gonna move that back a little. And it might sound something like this. In the musical world, we call that ad-libbing. In the non-musical world, we might call that adjusting or adapting or overcoming. Quite frankly, I would rather ad-lib. First of all, it's simply fun to say the word. And second of all, when you ad-lib, it is absolutely expected that you are going to break the rules, and you are not going to play exactly what is written on the page. And is, isn't it true that in life, it very seldom stays true to the written page? Ad-libbing is not only freeing, it is a sign of expertise. If you forget a note, you can add in notes that weren't even there. If you make a mistake, you can cover it with different notes. When I think of adjusting, or adapting, or overcoming, I think of the obstacle, and not the end objective. When you ad lib, it is absolutely understood that you are going to take something simple, or perhaps even broken, and you are going to make it much more spectacular. As my children grew older, I decided that I was going to take a couple of college classes right here at NMC, of course. I signed up for two classes one spring semester, computer keyboarding, and a one-credit elective, private music um, lessons, with a master organist here at the campus at the time. His name was Professor Kent Stearman. I did mention it was the spring semester, right? Because in northern Michigan, the spring semester really means the winter semester. <laughs> and there I was one day before the beginning of the semester, minding my own business, putting gas in my vehicle. When I turned from the gas pump to go into the gas station to pay for my gas, I slipped on the ice. I came down very hard on my right hand, and just like that, I had broken my arm. And here I was, signed up for two classes, where I rather needed my fingers and my wrists and my arms. I remember calling Professor Stearman and explaining to him how, unfortunately, I was going to have to reschedule those lessons, because after all, I had broken my arm, my right arm, in fact, and I had a cast on it. I would have to reschedule those lessons for the fall. But Professor Stearman said, oh, no, 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 no. You don't have to cancel your lessons. We will simply work on your left hand exclusively, and you can practice left hand scales and left hand parts and left hand harmonies, and I will play the right hand parts for you. And my heart sank because I really wasn't very strong on the left hand even then. <clears throat> I am much stronger on that left hand now. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Stearman. The skills that I learned in that one credit elective I've used them time and time and time again. And what a great life lesson. If you can't play with your right hand, it's okay to play with your left. Ad lib, maybe your right hand is broken. Maybe your right hand isn't ready. Or for some reason, it's just not able at that moment to play. That's all right. Ad lib and know that at some point, your right hand will be ready. It will no longer have a cast on it. Or maybe, quite simply, someone will come along and play the right hand parts for you. Just ad lib right around that situation. My professor was that person. He was a door opener, and he could see an end objective that I couldn't see. 
Recently, there has been another NMC door opener in my world, and I would like to take just a quick moment to thank Professor Mike Oberlin for nominating me for being able to present here to you today at the TEDx. Professor Mike, our class was online. I have not yet had that privilege to meet you, but I do look forward to that opportunity. My neighbor called me one day, and he said, Dawn, I know you've been playing piano at that little church out in the country in the field, and my daughter really wants to learn to play the piano. Will you teach her how? I said, oh no, 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 no. I'm not good enough. I'm not talented enough, I'm not educated enough to teach your lovely daughter how to play the piano. My neighbor didn't want to take no for an answer. He was very persistent, <clears throat> and it caused a little stress in my life because I didn't want to tell my neighbor no, but I really, truly didn't feel qualified. I was discussing this situation with some friends of mine, and I'll never forget my good friend Jim looking at me and saying, but Dawn, can you stay one page ahead of her in the book? Well, I thought maybe I could stay one page ahead of her in the book. And so I began to teach my neighbor's daughter how to play the piano. And by so doing, I began to teach myself how to teach others how to play the piano that I love so much. And I worked really hard at staying one page ahead. Prodigy, I am not, but I do enjoy playing the piano and making and teaching others to make a little music in this crazy world. I find it fascinating, however, that after almost 30 years of having fun with the piano, I can still hardly accept a compliment when it comes to that gift. Do you know when I typed up the talks, the notes for my talk, and worked through my rough draft, every time I type the word talent in reference to myself, I put it in quotation marks. I did that. Recently, I took on a new student. After our first lesson, his mother messaged me, and she said, I haven't seen my son this excited in a long time. He can't wait for his next lesson. Thank you for sharing your talent. I began to message her right back, and I mean right back, to explain to her how I really wasn't very talented. <laughs> I felt an incredible sense of urgency to explain to her how very untalented I really am. <laughs> I have learned that I am not alone in this habit of self-criticism. And since I have observed it so much in the world of piano, I have coined a new phrase closet piano players. <laughs> a closet pianist is someone who has been given the gift to make the piano sing beautiful songs. But because closet piano players do not believe in themselves, the world is denied that gift. Instead, they believe the lie that so many of us believe, that we are not good enough, not talented enough, not educated enough, not enough and the wonderful gift that is theirs is denied to the world. We need to understand that our talents are meant to enrich the lives of those around us. Our gifts are meant to enrich our families. They're meant to be a blessing to our friends, our neighbors, our coworkers, our entire circle and network of people. When you share your passion, however inexperienced, however uneducated, something magical happens. You will make people smile. You will brighten their day. You will remind them that there is still good in the world. And you will encourage them to find and explore and share their talent. You will find a power to open doors and other people that you never expected just by not being too afraid or too intimidated or too shy to share your gift or to share what you know or what you love. Truly, this is the best pay it forward ever. The greatest resource on our planet isn't diamonds or gold. 
It isn't barrels of oil or fancy palaces. It isn't even money. It's people. And until more and more of the billions of people that walk the face of our planet can recognize that they have a gift, are willing to share that gift, and can see the gifts and talents in others, then the world is lacking in all that it could be. Can you see? I can see a world where there are no closet piano players, where there are no closet authors, songwriters, philosophers, poets, no closet engineers, no closet architects, no hidden gifts at all. Be that person. Be a door opener. Ad lib, and if you can't play with your right hand, then by all means, play with your left. And do not deny the world your gift, the wonderful gift that is you. And if that little church in the country in the field had denied me, I wonder if I would be here today to play this for you. With the book.